I guess it's been a while. Sorry about that, but don't worry, I haven't stopped making the game. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. I realized that the devlog videos were sort of slowing me down and preventing me from actually working on the game. So I decided to take a break from making content and focus on making some real progress. So I apologize for keeping you all in the dark. I hope you didn't miss me too much. But the good news is, now that I'm back, boy, do I have some updates for you. So let's get into it. Last time we talked, the game looked like this, and it didn't even have a name. Now the game looks like this, and I'm pleased to announce the title, Dungeon Thrall. It's a play on the genre Dungeon Crawl, since you're taking control of an adventurer, making them your thrall, and fighting your way through a dungeon. Yes, I think I'm very clever. I also hope you like the logo. I made it myself and it took a lot of work. Moving on, hands for the player. It seemed useful to be able to see your own hands while you played the game, especially when you're in a menu. Speaking of menus, one of the things I really like about these menus is that they work in VR or on the computer with a mouse and keyboard or controller. This really speeds up the development process and allows me to test things without having to put the headset on and off. I also built out an options submenu that allows me to tweak and test different values while playing, as well as do basic things like adjust the music volume and even prevent enemies from spawning. This has been super helpful for getting feedback on different settings during playtesting. There's also a pause menu, which allows you to change values on the fly, as well as quit back to the main menu, and a game over screen, which fades to red and shows you a tally of how many enemies you killed as well as how long you survived. I'd like to continue to build this out, as well as create a high score leaderboard, but that requires me to learn how to do persistent save data as well as implement a keyboard, both of which are on the to-do list, but not for the moment. I also created a new map and separate tutorial area to teach new players some of the different mechanics of the game, including swinging your sword to destroy crates, yep, those are new too, forcing the player to jump across a gap with a helpful ramp in case they miss the first time, a brazier that the player has to light using magic to trigger a door to open, doors coming soon, and finally, a room with basic enemies and health potions to let them experience combat in a relatively safe environment. In fact, I think the health and mana bars themselves are new. I really like the floating 3D effect and how they change colors as they get depleted to make it easy to understand at a glance. Speaking of magic, I started out with just a fire spell that hurt enemies and lit them on fire, but decided it needed some more variety. Currently, I also have an ice spell that freezes enemies in place, a throwable and remote detonatable bomb, and a super speed spell that lets you run around the map while everything else slows down. I don't love the super speed slash dash at the moment, as I think it should feel snappier and more nimble, so I'll continue to noodle on it. Having multiple spells also meant that I needed a way to switch between them, so I created this magic selector ring that you bring up and choose from the different options. I quite like this approach and think it helps further integrate the player into the experience, though I'm getting some weird pixel artifacts that I need to fix at some point. Shout if you have any advice. I also wanted to make the game left hand friendly, so I made a menu option that swaps around the sword and controls. There's a new type of enemy too. I created a purple skinned variant of the goblin featuring a bow and arrow for a ranged attack, which adds a lot more variety to combat. I also added a sword trail that helps with visibility and changes color the faster it's swung. There's now a ragdoll system for when you kill an enemy or die yourself. Another addition that made a big impact are sound effects, including sword hits, damage cries, footsteps, magic spells, bomb ticks and booms, empty mana notifications, and more. A lot of these are just temporary placeholders, but they really help the world feel alive and give the player more feedback on their actions. I've also started working with particle systems, but again, most of these will need to be reworked, especially since I've discovered that transparency doesn't work great on VR headsets. There have also been a lot of other experiments that are not in the current build, but might be brought back in the future. These include things like a giant troll boss, different camera views, including a first person perspective that was really cool, creating a giant lava dungeon with lots of platforming, a crossbow, a desktop map that made all the characters look like tiny action figures, and doors that only open once all the enemies in a given room are dead. 
Lastly, and maybe the biggest update, is that the game now runs natively on my headset and doesn't need to be connected to the computer at all once the game's installed. This was a huge step and has made it possible to show the game to a lot of my friends and family and slowly start the process of getting more and more player feedback. I'm really happy with the progress I've been making and it feels like I'm actually getting close to having a complete version one of this game. There's a whole laundry list of things I'd like to include, but I'm trying to keep the scope as limited as possible so I can launch a beta program in the very near future and start getting feedback and bug reports from real people. With that in mind, I'm launching a Discord. It will be the hub for all Dungeon Thrall news and how I plan to manage beta recruitment and feedback, but I also want it to be a fun and helpful place for anyone interested in VR or Unreal to come and hang out and share what they're working on. So, if you'd like to join, check out the link in the description below. Otherwise, if you'd like to support my channel, check out my itch.io page. I've been releasing asset packs of things I've made while learning Blender and working on my game, including the previously mentioned bow and VR hand models. Of course, you can also subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, comment, share, uh, yeah, you know, all the usual. And I'll make sure that the next devlog video comes out a lot sooner than this one did. Take care, and see you later.